Welcome to the Beer Ladies Podcast with your hosts, Lisa, Katie, Christina, and myself, Tandy. You can find us at our website or all over social media. Our website is beerladiespodcast.com and our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Mastodon, Blue Sky, TikTok, and even Facebook are at Beer Ladies Pod or Beer Ladies Podcast. If you'd like to support the show, you can find our merch store link uh, on any of our social media bios uh, or in the show notes for this episode. And if you'd like to sponsor an episode, do mail us at beerladiespodcast at gmail.com. Now back to the beer. Hello and welcome back to the Beer Ladies Podcast. I am Lisa and I am your host this week. Hello. And I am joined by Katie and Christina. Ladies. Hi. So we have what I think is going to be a fun new topic uh, this evening or this afternoon, this morning, whenever you are listening. Uh, Before I get into that, you can always find us on our socials. We're usually on threads. We're on Blue Sky. I know we've recorded it now properly for you guys to listen to, but, you know, we're out there. So do hit us up. And of course, we've got a link tree, all of the things. But we are excited because this is going to be one of our kind of fun episodes. We haven't done too much research, although we've done just enough to be dangerous, I think. But I think this is a really fun topic because today it's something very near and dear to me. It is beer and running. So I I can see Christina and Katie are both super excited. (laughs) Super excited. <laughs> but before we get into it, we're going to go around and find out what everyone has for a beverage today and whether or not they are kind of on theme as well. So Katie, we'll start with you. What have you got? Well, I have, this has been on the podcast before, I know, but it's a good, solid, uh, non-alcoholic beer. I have Hope Hop Off, which is a non-alcoholic IPA. Very good. Very, Very good. good. Drinking local, so... We love to see it. Of course. Very good. And Christina, what what do you have this evening? I know you're coming down with a cold, so you're not trying to push the boat out, but what yeah, have you got? I don't have anything to drink. Um, but I did I did bring for show and tell um Beer Matters, which is the camera magazine from the Sheffield and District, which I'm really there's uh, something thematic in here. So this is my mm. uh, show and tell of the day. <laughs> very good very good we will get to it and just as a side note we loved all the little local magazines we found in sheffield so great job everyone in yorkshire with all their beer publications so wonderful stuff that we will get to and uh for me i have an athletic brewing company upside dawn so this is their golden ale again also alcohol free and we'll we'll get into a little bit about that as well uh, but I guess before we st- start to get into the kind of why the non-alcoholic beers, what does it mean in terms of running? Does it mean you can't drink if you're running? Well, lots of different perspectives here. And, and I'll say beer is one of the things that got me into running in the first place years ago. And I'll I'll chat a little bit about that in a bit. But before we do that, I'll I'll ask Katie and Christina, ladies, what is your opinion of running? Where are you on the running spectrum? And I, I can see you both are making interesting faces so (laughs) I personally feel like I am in an abusive relationship with um parkrun at the moment (laughs) I never want to go (laughs) I don't want to go but if I don't go I feel really bad and I feel like I've let parkrun down and parkrun is going to be angry at me and it's like I have to go so um I have done 24 run so oh, far so my next run will be my 25th park run oh brilliant but yeah I have not reached that stage where I can say I like running or I love going for a run I I find it hard I don't enjoy it <laughs> the running part I like it before and after I like to chat Fair. with the people um shout out to my fellow uh Jerry athletes, as we've called ourselves, a <laughs> uh, group of women over 40. <laughs> I love it. Who uh, who are doing the runs along West Dublin, in a way. Um, yeah. When, when, Lisa, when will I actually like running? Uh, it will come. It will come. Although we'll get to what to do if it doesn't. But it took me a couple of years. Um, and I guess I'll... I'll I'll dive into my story quickly and then I'll come back to Christina because she has a very important point to make about all of this that we I am 100% supportive of. But I only got into running because 
I saw people doing it from different breweries and it looked like fun. And I thought, oh, I should I should try that. So I'm actually wearing, uh, if we can see it, I've got one of my old dogfish head, dogfish dash t-shirts. This is from the second year of their uh, race that they do every year. And I think now they're into like the 24th year or something like that. But um, I started off thinking, oh, I've never run before, but it, it's 5K. How hard could that be? And it turns out actually it's very hard until you've gotten into the the rhythm of it. But I started off wanting to do that race. And the first time I did the 5K and then I did the 10K and then they changed it to an 8K in the middle. So fine. But just from trying to do that and it feeling really, really terrible until I realized, well, not realized, I was told I had to have a professional tell me that the problem was I was trying to go too fast too soon and to ease into things. So we we will we'll definitely talk a little bit about sort of run coaching and, and what what might that might be like too. But I think again, it's it takes time to build up that foundation and and you never have to be fast. Like there's there's no kind of certain speed you have to get. I find the running community is really, really supportive of everyone, no matter how fast or slow you are. It's just that, like you said, just that you're out there doing it, and you're having the chats and it's really good. But you also don't even necessarily have to run because Christina, tell us your your POV on this. Oh, so so like I, when I'm particularly like feeling ambitious, like I will run like once or twice a week. Um, I'm not fast, but you know, I'll get 25, 30 minute run in. I don't, not 5k. I'm not mm -hmm. that fast. Um, but it's, it's, it's something, but I walk a lot. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. instead of running, I walk like 10 kilometers a day, um, every day. Because yeah, here, here. I will do it. <laughs> I won't yeah. run. Like running for me is it's the same thing as Katie. Like my brain is like, running? <laughs> no, we don't want to do that. Which I kind of like threaten myself with. And I'm like, well, if you're not going to run, then you have to walk. My brain's like, okay, right. we'll do that. Yeah. And so then I'll, it'll be like, okay, let's walk, you know, 10 to lately. It's been more like 15 kilometers. I've actually yeah. been standing. I'm very happy. That's awesome. Weather's nice. So I'm out a lot. Um, yeah. So I'm like, oh, just keep walking. You can put on your favorite podcasts and you can Absolutely. just wander around. Um, so yeah, I mean, but you can walk, we can walk at these 5Ks too, or the 10K. Like I Absolutely. signed up to do the women's, what is it in June? It's the mini, mini we, marathon. The BHI women's mini marathon. Yes. Yes. So we're and all going to do that. it. We're all going to do it. And some other friends of the pod are going to do it as well. So that exactly. will be super so fun. You don't, you don't have to 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 run to get the same cardiovascular effects Absolutely. and you'll still you know if you're you know if you're walking enough faster pace you'll still increase your heart rate you'll still get all those wonderful endorphins and all those wonderful things that happen when you get cardiovascular exercise so i you know really really would endorse walking if running isn't your jam um because i love walking and it is great exercise yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm the same. I will walk and walk and walk. And I, I'm just, you know, again, I've, I've got my podcasts in so I can just exactly. keep going and keep going. And uh, I, I love it. Yeah, I, I am training for a half marathon in September because when I was slightly more ambitious, I would try to do one half marathon a year, but I didn't get to one last year just because life and things and, and you don't want to get injured if you're not, you know, training properly. But I am going to do one this year. I'm going to go over to Newcastle to do the Great North Run. And I'm really excited about that because I can also make it into a beer trip because I want to go to Wylam and check out the brewery there. So <laughs> I, I always try to do that. Like the last time, actually, the last half marathon I did was in Limerick. And again, it was an excuse to go visit our friends at Crew because they're there. And uh, one of the best things was after finishing. And, and again, this is this was your sort of an object lesson. It's actually my fastest half marathon ever, but the last, I would say two or three kilometers, I was like, I was not happy. The weather was really bad. It was just like, oh, so I, when I finally like got in, got my medal, got into mother max, like with the pint, I was just like, okay, this is good. And then <laughs> I had a lot of trouble standing up later, not because I'd had too much to drink, but just because I hadn't stretched and it was stiff oh, and no, it was cold yeah. and uh, I had I had some regrets, but I was glad I'd done it and got some nice photos with the medal and, and all of that kind of thing. But I think, uh, again, I, I'm looking forward to it and training properly this time so that I don't have that happen where I am regretting life for, you know, 
certain uh, certain portions of it. But I, I will say that's always been one of the big things for me is I want to, you know, get to the end of the race and have something nice at the end. Now, I do always have the water as well. And I love my electrolytes. I like to have, you know, sort of it all mixed together. But I think over the past couple of years, this has been one of these kind of uh, either low or no alcohol beer selling points is, is it a recovery drink? Is it an isotonic drink? And I think, you know, we've all kind of looked some stuff up, but I don't know, Katie, Christina, what have you both found? And and I think there's, I'll say the science isn't settled. We'll start there. Yeah. I, I, I want to start with just saying that, like, if you're reading anything that says any of these studies on like a popular website to be really, really like careful with that and to go look at the studies yourself and read them, because a lot of reporting, science reporting, is just a lot of misunderstanding of the yeah. studies and not really understanding like what their actual conclusions were and like making generalizations and like that's not what they're saying. Or also like look at the studies and like what's the sample size and like did they have a control? Like there's all these other yeah. things to like look at when you're looking at these scientific studies. So bear all of that in mind when we're talking about this because some of these, you know, things might not be as accurate as perhaps they're being presented um but that's for you to kind of look and, and see for yourself um yeah but there, there does seem to be some kind of a correlation so there apparently there was a study um at the technical university of munich um that has to do with non-alcoholic wheat beer in some ways being beneficial for for athletes um and so i think that's the key thing like non-alcoholic <laughs> right. um beer perhaps being something somewhat beneficial um yeah so this the it was a it looks like it was a a randomized double blind placebo controlled trial so that's really interesting yeah um it says one result from the study was a discovery that after running a marathon race athletes experienced and testified inflammatory responses um shows that the non-alcoholic wheat beer contained polyphenols which had a uh, phenols which had a positive health promoting effect on the body um and infl it says inflammation parameters in the blood were significantly reduced um so, so i would yeah, link to this study so you can you can have a look for yourself um but i i think that was i mean that was interesting i, yeah. I found that interesting and, yeah. it, and it certainly makes sense on the face of it because you would get, you know, some some B vitamins as well. And and again, I think depending on how much salt or electrolytes or not are in that particular wheat beer, or if there are any naturally occurring, or if maybe they add them too, like that could be interesting. Because I, I think, you know, you never want to, or I want to say never, but you rarely want to just have like water at the end because it's just going to kind of go right through you and you want to be hydrating throughout and, you know, maintain the proper levels. But it's, it is the kind of thing where obviously we, we would not recommend you get to the the end of something and you don't have any water that you just go and like, you're not going to want to like knock back a double back. You will not, you, you, you'll not be a happy person. This is not the way forward, but there must be something there where, you, you know, you're getting some calories, you're getting, you know, you're, you're certainly yeah. all getting water as well, but you're not just getting that sort of you know, pure I, water, if you like. I think, so pure water, we'll say distilled water would be, hypotonic oh, because yeah. it actually has no minerals in it yeah. and what you want to do is you definitely want to replenish um water and the natural salts that you use through running so and you also want it to be isotonic so hypotonic mm. would be distilled water absolutely no mineral yeah. content Don't do isotonic that. Yeah. is where the minerals move easily into the cell mm. okay um, but then you also get hypertonic and anything with alcohol in it is basically hypertonic. Right. And that means that the alcohol is absorbed. And so the nutrients aren't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In a way. So um, I, I also found a study. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been doing our research from the University of Applied Sciences in Austria. And it was a study on the suitability of beer as an alternative to classical fitness drinks. And Ooh. rather than studying it on athletes, they actually compared it to, they actually studied what is in the drink. Oh, okay. Um, so they measured like the, the different salts that were in the beverage and they measured the amount of carbohydrate that was in the, the beverage because you also need 
to replace the sugars along with right. the, the salts and waters. And they also did measurements to see if it was isotonic. Okay. Um, and basically, oh, let me let me find the study. <laughs> There's some nice tables in it. Oh, and love a good table. So ev everything with alcohol was hypertonic, which meant that the alcohol impeded the minerals getting into the cell because the alcohol was like, take me, take me, right, you right, know? Right. <laughs> Um, but they did it. They found that the clouded beer, as in the yeast beers, this was in Austria, so right. they're used to their hefeweizen, were much better than a clear alcohol free beer. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, Ooh. I found that interesting. So the the alcohol free beers, most of them were isotonic. Um along with the fitness drinks. So they compared everything to fitness drinks, but then they, if, when you compare the carbs, and I thought, you know what, alcoholic beer, there's loads of sugar in it. Oh yeah. And it's going to have loads of carbs, but they didn't. They have an awful oh, lot of like the uh, polysaccharide, but they mm. don't have complex. They don't have other types of sugar that you need. Oh, sure, apparently. Huh. They don't have gluten as much glucose and fructose now that non-alcoholic cloudy drinks did have more mm. which makes them more suitable and then they also measured the the salt content and they are very low in their in their electrolytes right right I suppose. yeah but what they also did was which i found interesting was they tried to add they added different salts oh, so they added interesting. like sodium and potassium carbonates and citrates and sulfates and they tested them in the um in the beers to see did it which of these affected the flavor most so they found that the carbonates and the citrates so like potassium citrate or sodium citrate and carbonate impacted the flavor of the beer the least so okay. if you were going to develop a non-alcoholic beer that was meant to be for runners that you maybe you could add these salts after the brewing process. Okay. So, that's really cool. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, it was a, it was a really, really cool in-depth study. That, and I was like, this study, yeah. I'm going to tell the girls Yay, about science. It. Yeah. Oh, that's so, really cool. So it's great, but have it with something really salty. How about <laughs> that? I, okay, yeah, I'm here for that. I think every race should give you like a really nice pretzel and then something to drink <laughs> at the end. So maybe, maybe we just need like a good like Oktoberfest run or something. Uh, because it does see a lot of these, it seems like a lot of these non-alcoholic beers, and I, I I think I read too that they give you some at the end of the Berlin Marathon, do come from Germany and Austria. And so yeah. I wonder if it's just more part of the, you know, just sort of more part of the running culture there, or is it just that they're doing the research there? Like, I'm, I'm curious what makes it, I guess, what why is there so much more research there maybe than, than other places? I'm sure there is other places as well, but I, I wonder. Because breweries have money and hey, are funding you know it, maybe could well be to see that little well uh, sound bite on in the magazine or on the radio it's like beer is good for runners you know yeah well and what i've even think? seen them like in german like they'll say like this is an isotonic beverage on on some of them so yeah and i, I feel like that would probably be harder to do in terms of the you know the compliance and the regulations uh in terms of what labels you can put on things because you know alcohol and even non-alcoholic beer is a highly regulated industry and there's a whole process you have to go through for that but i i do wonder yeah at what point can you say yes this is healthy but but you know not the rest i don't know it's it's a tricky question well i don't think healthy is the word it's like does it does it it's, um... it's a good question you know, does it replenish what you have lost through your right. workout? Yeah, which yeah, absolutely. If you haven't been working out, might not be that healthy, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, that's that's one of those things is like when they stopped like like a Gatorade type of thing, and I, I've I've never liked those anyway. Just the the flavor of those is too much for me. I mean, some of those they have you know as much sugar as like drinking a Coke or something like that. And if you haven't been working out, you don't need to have a you know 200 calories of Gatorade with everything else in it and the, those colors like uh now that said like I have I have certain like you know uh certain electrolyte drinks that I really really do like but uh it's because I'm a weirdo and I'm I've like you know conditioned myself to be used to them now I like I don't think I would 
if I didn't run, but it's, uh, it's, it's a whole thing now, but yeah, but like, so, like it is weird. Like some of the, like, I would say a good, like half of that industry, you know, maybe more than, you know, they're selling them to people who aren't doing anything physical. And then it's, it's of no benefit to you. It's just weird colors and weird sugars. And yeah. And then they sell it, like they get some TikTok star to market <laughs> it to people wearing tracksuits and Canada goose jackets. And oh you're like, God. Why are you, what? and they charge a tenner a bottle and you're yeah. like no you're crazy yeah. crazy it's people so so strange and and then you get the other extreme and probably only touching this a little bit because it gets way more complicated but you get people kind of on the other end of the spectrum then who won't buy any of the kind of commercial like whether we call them fitness drinks or health drinks or whatever it's like no they're all poison i make my own and which is great if that's what you want to do yeah. but some people also develop this kind of sort of purity theory around it that becomes unhealthy in its own way and then it's yeah uh, it's all about you know balance there's definitely a problem with like orthorexia like around oh, yeah. all of this culture and like I definitely think there's I think we need to be careful when we're you know making categories of like bad foods and good foods and like Absolutely. it should be more like you know foods we have all the time like fruits and vegetables and like foods right. we have some of the time you know maybe yeah. like beer right 100 um, but neither of them are bad, right? Because there's yeah, always exactly. having a cake, you know, cake on your birthday is a wonderful thing to have if you like cake. Absolutely. You know, unless you're allergic, as as people say, I've seen many uh, food people that I like to follow, um, unless you're like allergic to it or, you know, something like that, then it's not a bad food, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, because I definitely see that kind of language. Like yeah. uh, when I when I was researching this for today, in like articles and things and I think that's yeah maybe let's like step away from that kind of categorization yeah um, absolutely because it can be so it, unhelpful either like, way yeah yeah it's not helpful because like if you've just run a 5k with all your mates and then you're having a like you know a beer alcoholic or non-alcoholic afterwards like what a wonderful thing that doesn't yeah, negate it's just good fun yeah yeah you're and, and socializing is important I think I think it's all wonderful um I think it's great yeah, absolutely. And, and actually, maybe that's a perfect segue, you know, sort of then you, you run and have some drinks with your friends. I think there are so many places that do, you know, there's like breweries that sponsor runs or that have like monthly runs, things like that. So again, I mentioned Crew earlier, they've got a run club down in Limerick. Uh, the Galway Bays in Galway have, I think, two different run clubs. There was one here for a while in Dublin, but I don't know if it's happening again yet. I feel like I keep just missing them. And uh Part of it too is I think you have to be following it on whichever social media is working that day, week, month, you know, whichever. So you have to kind of um, figure out their cadence. But I, I will say these, you know, I, I've been in a couple of really, really fun, you know, beer and running clubs. I was in one of the Mick Heller ones in Philadelphia with my friend Karen. Shout out Karen, if you're listening. But we, we had a great time, you know, it would be kind of a monthly thing. Um, you know, it was kind of you know, five-ish K, but again, no one took it super seriously. You could go at any pace and then you'd have a couple drinks after with your friends and, you know, no one is sort of freaking out like, ah, oh, I'm, you know, you know, I'm either like, this is a bad thing I'm doing or a good thing I'm doing. Like you're saying, it was just part of a normal, you know, mm -hmm. everything in moderation and just a really good opportunity to get out and socialize. And especially for the Philly one, there's some really interesting bars they would stop at. So you could try all kinds of things you might not come across otherwise. And they'd have specials. So it was really good. Hang on, hang on, that hang sounds on. Sounds a lot of fun. So during the 5K, do you stop at the bars or do you do the ah, whole 5K now, and then? I've never done one of these where you stop at a bar midway through. Okay, so okay. maybe we'll... We'll talk about that in a minute or or some of yeah, those things because cause there's <laughs> yeah. there's a there's a different culture around that but uh we'll, we'll get to that in a minute but I I would uh, I actually I, I tell a lie I did one once but I was one of the sort of half the group was kind of 50 50 like some of the I'll, I'll say you know, some of the younger fitter guys were like yeah have a beer in the you know halfway through and then carry on running and the rest was like I'm gonna have water and then keep going because there's no way I would be able to like stop have a drink and then start again like I just do not digest that that quickly yeah, not no. not for me not for me but no but there's a whole culture of this so I know Christina you did some research tell well, me about that the beer mile 
Well, first I want to share about like fun also beer okay, events yes, we want to hear fun like good yours. things first. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is Beer Matters. This is the uh this particular one is the Camera Sheffield District issue 532, March 2024. Um that Lisa and I picked up when we were in um at Indie Beer Feast um Sheffield Beer Week. So there's this wonderful article in here. Um just about Sheffield Beer Week, which um, which is the 10th anniversary, and um, also about Sheffield's Festival of the Outdoors. And one of the events they had was a running and beer event, um, which was a collaboration between Triple Point Brewery, Hop Hideout, and Run Talk Run. So I thought that was really cool that that featured. Um, yeah, that sounds like so much fun. Magazine, which can you see? Is it okay? There, there. it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, and there's yeah. my book there. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Um, I thought, that, well, first of all, this magazine um, is fantastic, very interesting. I'm glad that they have these. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really cool to see as part of like a festival event. Yeah, um, yeah, they do that for Philly Beer Week cool. as well. It's it's really good where they do, I think, I want to say there was a 5 and a 10K option. But again, it's all chill. It's not like it's timed. It's just, This one was know. 5K, I think, yeah. from what I saw. But I thought that was really, really cool. Like a really yeah. fun... I love place that. to tie in the whole thing and like being outside and then you know and I, I thought that was a really cool thing and I'd like to see more of that please yeah um, absolutely love and that. even like you know a 5k run and also a walk I want to see like both oh, totally. everything kind of incorporated yeah. um but I thought that was really neat but yes the beer mile which I am uh, I'm so perplexed by and I, <laughs> and I don't mean to be controversial Right, um, because people are taking this very, very seriously. And, and if you're someone who does it, you do you. More power to you. We're, we're I'm not, not judging. We're just like, whoa. <laughs> I'm not here to yuck anyone's yum. Like, if yeah. that's your thing and you love it, like, live your best life. Enjoy yes. it. Yes. More power to you. But it seems like a lot of people, like, it's 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 very difficult. Like, you have yeah. to drink four beers, you know, in each lap you drink a new beer. And then this can cause, like, it seems like stomach distress and, like, all kinds yeah. like wow like yeah. it seems like a lot let's start with how long is the beer mile it's one mile is it yeah and, and it's you... usually around a track i think is is what yes. they seem to be yeah and each lap you drink another beer and i guess like you're strongly encouraged after you're done to like tilt it over your head to prove that you've actually finished oh so beer. not even just to like get the rest like maybe you didn't finish yeah. it but you have to oh oh yeah and yeah. from what i remember the world record man has it like in four minutes and some odd seconds and then the woman has it in five minutes and some odd like it's wow. just which is just incredibly fast yeah. to drink i mean to like i mean just think about drinking four beers in five minutes without the running like right that's, right what <laughs> <laughs> like <I couldn't>. how <laughs> I'm not, I'm not built for it, but you know, there are people who do competitive eating and that, they, that works for them. So I'm no, sure it's a continuum. Like, seriously, so. if it, it's people seem to be really, really into it and it seems to make them really happy. There's competitions like all over, like it's, it's a huge thing that I was like, you know, did a rabbit hole. And, and if, you know, like I said, if people really love to do it, I think that's incredible. Like, I mean, more power to you, but right. oh you my you. gosh, yeah. like it just seems so hard. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like like exactly. are both like your 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 you know your your internal systems and your you know your your muscles and and everything yeah. like it's just wow it's like one of those iron man competitions but like you know shorter <laughs> like a mini like um you're experiencing it all in that whatever though yeah four like or five it's all minutes. condensed yeah. into like you know <laughs> under 10 minutes of of pure you know whatever i just what do you think katie and lisa about uh katie you're making a face <laughs> of hard like per kilometer i has i'm still not like under seven minutes <laughs> for my kilometer and if i well just had to drink four beers as well i'd be dead like oh i yeah. can't even breathe i can't even talk to people when i'm running because i'm like oh no, i, I, I still can't breathe. No. i can't waste no. air on you yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i like well, you like, but we'll talk after so and like, like the side splints that you get plus having and like I I seriously like it just sounds like such a like a test of like your whole body like oh yeah not just a silly thing to do haha ha, this might be some like it seems like a serious like test what of, the, of what is the fortitude. quantity of what is the quantity of beer 12 is, ounces. Like a, is that a pint like that ish close yeah, to like 330 mil 
ish. Yes, I think it's 30 mil, like okay. 12 ounces. But still um, more than you'd want to be knocking back four of in that five minutes of time. Yeah. And then running. And, and now granted, I'm sure most of these are like a like a light beer equivalent, but still like just the carbonation would, would get me. I wouldn't be able to I think it has to be know. a certain percentage. Let me look. Oh, does it? Oh gosh, yeah, this is complicated. And I do know that people take it very seriously. And again, we're we're not judging. We're just saying we couldn't do it. So fair yes. play. Yes. Okay. So um, the Beer Mile, uh, which is beermile.com, is the world's premier drinking event, which honestly, the Beer Mile is equal parts gastric challenge and athletic endeavor, which is true. Like it does seem to be, you know, like I said, um, it requires competitors to drink a, a 355 mil beer with a 5% minimum ABV oh, for so every cool. quarter mile of the race, totaling four beers over one mile course. Wow. Wow. They've hosted... 4,516 events with 177, uh, 177, 184,000 beers drank with 44,296 miles run. Wow. That's a lot. And they're making a documentary, which is cool. Like I, I'm, I'm very interested to watch the documentary, yeah. but wow, this is just. Oh yeah, the top woman Shelby Houlihan ran it in five minutes forty three seconds and eight v one point eighty one, and looks like the top man is Corey Belmore for four minutes twenty eight seconds point ten. Wow. Fair play to you, Shelby mean, and Corey. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I mean, these are like hardcore athletes. Like this is. Oh yeah, if they did a beer mile in Dublin, would we do it? I go watch for the crack or for science. <laughs> I I would not participate, but I would go watch um, because I really think that I don't have the level of, of of athleticism to be able to to do that um, without you know. What if we could walk? <laughs> I mean, I could run a reasonably you know? fast mile, but not you know. I, I wouldn't even be able to like drink water though. Like I don't it's even the usually drinking drink something yeah, during even, yeah. like a race it's, unless it's really hot and really long like I wouldn't most of the time uh just because it does just yeah it just get, would, eh, too much then yeah yeah it, it it's it's yeah I I like I said I I I, it's, I don't think I could I physically don't think I have the capabilities of doing that yeah I don't think I'm built for it maybe I don't know <laughs> I would but go like I that. think it would be cool to go watch people who are really good at it do it. Yeah. Um yeah. Definitely. Um yeah. because like I said that it must be like very high like amazing athletes to be able to to do something like that. Oh god, wow. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm just impressed enough like well, Katie like you're saying like in my park run I'm just like I'll see the you know the people who finish in the first like 10 or so I'm like they're fast like I you know. <laughs> I am happy enough with uh, that. <laughs> and I think I, I do like for people who don't know what park run is that we're talking about. It's a oh, it's a free it's a free um event that happens usually on a Saturday morning and it's it's worldwide, even though there are some countries that don't do it. Um and what you do is you basically go onto their website and you register, you get a barcode, um, and you can have it on your phone, you can print it off. I've heard that uh some park runs are like you need to have your paper barcode. I'm not scanning it off your phone, which I don't really understand, but I haven't been to any of them. Um, I heard anecdotally. Um, and what you do is you all show up. They say, go, you run, they you time go. you. You get a token at the end. They scan it and your barcode. And then um, a few hours later, you'll get an, an email to say what your time was. And um, that's it. And then you can practice. And uh, and I will say, when I started off, I was uh, 44 minutes for a uh, 5K. And uh, I'm down to like the, I broke the 37 minute Oh, wall that's wonderful. Yay. Recently. So awesome. I'm very proud of myself. And I'm getting, and it took me, so I think I started in June or July. And it took me till just before Christmas to actually be able to run one without stopping and but even it's also now, okay I, it's also okay i to still stop, stop. So. and it's like i stop i run i stop i run but i'm getting faster and i'm getting uh 
I'm getting better at not needing to stop as much as well. Oh, that's awesome. So you do, uh, people just, just, just get up and do it. And yeah, there, there's walkers and they, they have a designated person that is the tail walker so that you're never last, which I kind of like. Yeah, I think it's, it's really good. And and I think for, was it all for the month of April or March, but they were really trying to make it clear that no, there's park walking and you don't have to run. They really wanted to make it feel more inclusive for people, even though it already was, but just to remind people who maybe don't know or haven't been. And, and it, it does kind of become addictive in its, its own way, because you know, like you say, you've got your barcode, but I've, I've got mine on a wristband because, you know, I got that for one of my milestones as a little treat for myself. So I think it's, it's nice to, you know, you can also, as you see your, your numbers, well, some numbers creeping up and like you, some numbers creeping down, although I, I have, keep getting slower but that's okay I'm still having fun but uh it's it's nice to still say oh I've done this many I've done this many and just kind of keep keep racking them up and 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 if you do get really dedicated to park runs specifically then you can you can you can measure it all kinds of other ways as well because there's all sorts of fun oh gosh what's the right word like competition is the wrong word sort of statistical things games things you can sort of I got a do... V. I got a V in when I yeah. was down in Clare. I did a run ah, in Vandeleur. Yes, yes, Vandeleur and you can Garden. do a whole. Yeah, you could do the whole alphabet. Uh, although I'm only let's see, I've got I've got a P. Uh, I've got an, an O. Um, let's see, and then F is you know my usual one. I'm trying to think of oh, H because I did hilly fields. Yeah, so yeah, you can you can find a park run near you somewhere, especially if you're in Ireland or the UK because they started in the UK. There's there's a bunch of them, and you can can sort of collect them so it's it's good fun but absolutely you don't have to run you can just walk and have a good time and get a cup cup of tea after or you know whatever or you know because i I would say to to bring it back to the to the beer topic i'll say usually i you know most races well i'll say in north america most races are like first thing in the morning so it's an unusual thing to be getting the beer at the end because it might be like nine or 10 o'clock in the morning. And then it's like a really special occasion, but I feel like a lot of races here start later in the day. So it's kind of more socially acceptable to be be like, oh, well, if your race started at 11 and you're finishing at, you know, whatever, 12 or whatever, you're like, well, it's afternoon. So you can kind of feel less weird about treating yourself, so. The mini marathon starts at 12.30, I think. So yeah, that's yeah. a very respectable hour to be going to the pub is when we finish that uh, up, you know? Uh, absolutely. And I know last year I uh, I ended up at um, where did I, end up? I ended up at the beer temple. So that was nice. But again, I, I actually, because it was so hot last year, I, I had them first like bring me water and I had all my hydration nonsense and I like sat there with it. And then they're like, have that first. I was like, okay, all good now. And then... I got um, a nice, uh, again, quite low key beer. Cause again, I would not recommend going for anything super strong or heavy after you've been running. And again, unless that's your thing, you do you. But they had something on that was like three and a half, four percent. I don't remember what, but I was like, this is perfect after like rehydrating, getting a snack and then just sort of relaxing. Cause you, you have earned that pint or you feel like you have, you know? So it was, it was just good, good, good crack. But uh, yeah, good times. But uh, I wanted to chat too a little bit about some of these running themed beers that are, there are out there in the world. So and, and, I, and for those who are just listening, Christina and Katie are both looking at me like I'm a crazy person. Like, why? <laughs> why? So I will. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to first mention the ones that, uh, again, Ollie of Swift Run Coaching, friend of the pod, uh, did with Torside. So again like Christina, brewed a couple beers with Torside. Um, but I love the way he did this because they, they actually were sort of decreasing in strength because the first one was, and you do this for fun. And it was eight and a half percent double IPA. So, you know, just, you're probably actually not having that one after running, but that's that's just funny. And then there was- I think, second I think that one is, is yeah. for the people who sit in the pub. And you talk yeah. about running and they say to you, and you do this for fun, Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's that's totally fair. Uh, but then there was one called Second Runnings. So see what they did there. See what they did there. So that was the 6.5% one. Um, but then there was a 
3.4% table beer called Pace Setter. And I got a couple bottles of that and it was gorgeous and just perfect to have something like that was something where I really would have liked having that after a run. It was just really refreshing, low key, just like really, really nice. And I, I also think more people should have table beer because it's just nice to nice to have the option. So again, it's not necessarily one of these non-alcoholic ones, like some of these German and Austrian things we were talking about, but it's also something where it's probably going to have a lot of similar benefits. Although as, as you point out, the candy will be hy hyper tonic, hyper hypertonic. Yes. Yes. So, but again, lower key, but there are a couple others out there though, too, that I was, I was thinking of, I know I've had some other like running themed beers and i'm just wondering if if either of you can think of any that have been done here in ireland or is this a is this a new frontier that maybe someone needs to to get in on oh i, I reckon they've been done but they've completely <laughs> passed me by and i'm yeah. oblivious to them <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> to be it's quite possible but it just would not have registered <laughs> that's funny oh gosh yeah because and, and again i know like I, I'm, I just i feel like galway bay must have done something since their run club out the, the one in galway seems to be really um active all the time so i would bet that they've done something so if anyone knows please uh please let us know and also maybe maybe send some up to dublin and get some stuff organized so because i'd like to do more of those and have fun but uh i don't know we'll see we'll see but yeah, so I don't know. Anything else we've discovered on beer running or beer and walking? Also totally fine. And uh, now that I think of it, I might also put in a plug. There's a really soothing television program on right now on Channel 4 with Bill Bailey, where he just takes people hiking from pub to pub um, in different parts of the UK. And it's very soothing and gentle. And then they just have a beer after each of their little walks. And it's just you're just like oh that's nice so well one thing I'm being particularly ambitious about is there's um there's an app called world walking oh. and you can pick all these different routes um and so you could like set up it to go through different countries and then like when you're in a certain country you could be like oh you know I'm gonna try beers from this country this month because oh, that's, that's where awesome. I'm walking um or something like that I think it's really fun they have all different um to be a super nerd about it, mm -hmm. I did the um, medieval sort of um, pilgrimage from uh, Canterbury to Rome, Good. Um, which I completed over COVID, which was super nerdy of me, but I really wanted to do it. That is normal. And, Here for it. But it was really cool. Amazing. Because, yeah, it shows you the... Um, like what you're looking at like around like google worldview so like if you stop oh, in the middle cool. of the road it like shows you you can see and then it has like the wikipedia sort of entry about like what's close by and stuff it's a really cool app it's world walking i think that's what it yeah it's world walking i think um so i highly recommend that if you're interested in walking i'm sure you could run it as well but um i walk with it and it just you know you can walk to the north pole if you're so inclined they have all different kinds of things that you can do um, and I just think it's a bit of fun to kind of be like, oh, where, what city am I in today or what country am I in today? And then you could probably that. team that with like the things that you're eating or drinking or or whatever. Oh, that is so cool. OK, yeah, we'll definitely have to put a link in the show notes because that sounds like a ton of fun. But yeah, I don't know. I, I also feel like, Katie, you and I are planning ahead because, you know, we're going to be off to Sweden soon. And I think I think we figured out there is a park run across the bridge in Copenhagen when we're there. So we'll have to nice. bring some running shoes, but also, you know, try some local beer too. We may not use it as a sort of immediate recovery drink, yes. but we'll balance the it two. Will, it will be the day before we go to the Mickler Beer Festival, not the <laughs> yeah. day after, the day off. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although again, Fair. that is, you know, yeah. Bringing, you know, a lot of water with, you know, some electrolytes is also my, my top beer festival tip too, because you don't want to, you don't want to overdo it. You want to stay hydrated and be sensible. So. Well, you see the hypertonic out, the alcohol gets in see? there before the nutrients can. So you're depleted of them. Your body is. Yeah. Good. Good call. There we go. See what we're trying to have the science here. And, and I think before we'll close up like one, one final little rant, which is that especially when it comes to sports science, a lot of the studies are only done on men. So just, eh, 
yeah. as per so do better that's all but I think again we're saying everything in moderation if you like to have a little run have a little run if you like to have a walk have a walk but uh yeah it's not a bad thing to have a beer you know after and there is some I think probably you know research still to be done but some of these uh non-alcoholic ones might be a nice thing to have as a little pick me up after do a little bit of rehydration so you know we can keep testing it for science and let you know so there, there you, you go. go so i think on that note we'll probably wrap up there and say thank you again for listening and we'll see you all again soon so bye bye, bye. bye.